say there is more. There is hope in the promise of the cross. You gave everything to save the world you love. And this hope is the neck of all my soul. I got this end on shame. Fall. 
a God that is great. Amen. Please be seated. We will have Deacon Sung Mo Lee now lead us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us gather here and worshiping you together as members of OIC Ministries. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all the grace you've given us throughout the week. Thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus Christ, to forgive our sins and make us your children. Lord, please help this country to get over all the difficult circumstances around it. Lord, we pray for all the missionaries out there doing your work. Please protect their hearts and fill them with your wisdom and power. Uh, Lord, please remember Myeongsong Church. Please fulfill our pastors and all the serving members with your everlasting power and wisdom, especially for our pastor emeritus and senior pastor. Our church is preparing this year's Thanksgiving next week. Please help all the hands and hearts preparing it, and let us give glory only to you. Please remember our OIC Ministries members who need recovery from their health, financial, or any other difficult situations. And please let us love each other more and pray, each other, pray for each other more. Lord, please be with us when we worship you today. Please be with Pastor Paul when he delivers your message. Please be with all the members of OIC Ministries and fulfill their hearts with your Holy Spirit when you hear your gospel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verses 7 to 14. Listen as we will have Deacon Hyung Sok Kim and Deacon Young Hyung Che lead us in the scripture reading. I invite you to open your Bibles and listen to the word of God. The law of the Lord, perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decree of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is one. In keeping them there is a great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden fault. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocence of great transgression. May, May these, these words, words of, of my mouth and, and the this meditation of my heart be pleasing, pleasing in your sight, Lord, my, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Today, I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you joining us for worship at Awake Ministry, Young Sung Church's English worship service. We are so happy and delighted to have you here. And if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. And I encourage you to come forward during our final song, or after worship rather, as we would love to get to know you better. May we all join together getting to know our God. Next Sunday will be our Thanksgiving Sunday. There will be photo zones and exhibitions um, in the Jerusalem building. So I invite and encourage you to join us then. And our very own, I'm, I'm gonna say this wrong, Gungbap will be provided. <laughs> um, in another note, cell groups We'll start meeting again in November. And I invite and encourage you to come and join in our fellowship groups by joining a cell group. So if that is something that you're interested in, please speak to one of our secretaries. I'd also like to invite anyone who wants to help us in leading worship 
Um, if that is something that you sense on your heart, either by helping us by leading prayer or scripture reading, um, please speak to one of the volunteers at our welcome desk as we would love to have you. Um, let us continue in our prayers for our church and nation and leadership. And let us especially lift up those who are currently affected by any illnesses. May we pray for the full recovery of health for all of those who are affected. And we are continuing in our promotional activities for our department, um, both online and in person. And if that is something you would like to become involved in, I encourage you to please speak to our very own Deacon Paul Kim. And lastly, we are delighted to announce the ordination of our very own Pastor Jessica Park. Um, she is the pastor of our Pideon department, and this is such a joyous occasion. She is going to be ordained this Tuesday, October 25th. And let us all pray and be with her, and may God be glorified through her ministry. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship as we will have a special praise from Yu Hyung Lee entitled Mission, and then our Shoshana Choir will be leading us in the song, Praise to the Lord Almighty.
Thank you for that praise, truly. Now let us hear the word of God as Pastor Paul Hahn will deliver the sermon entitled, Let There Be Life. Well, thank you, Pastor Rachel. Good afternoon. afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for coming and for joining to worship together today. It's always good to worship our Lord together. So welcome, and God bless you. Today, I want to talk to you about the words that we speak. In July 1996, a special lamb was born. Her name was Dolly. Uh, she had a mother, but not a father. She was a clone. Uh, she lived for six years and gave birth to six lambs. It's just it's remarkable. The scientific advances are amazing. And who would have thought that life could be cloned like that? Nevertheless, there are things that scientists can never do, which is creating life. Dolly was a special sheep, but she was not created. <coughs> scientists could clone her because uh, there was stem cells to work with in the first place. If there was literally nothing, no scientist, however great, could could not bring life, could not bring forth a form of life. However, there, there is a one area which I think humans can create things out of nothing. It's the area of speaking. When we speak, we do not use up uh, certain materials. Before we say something, nothing exists. Yet, the moment we open our mouth, something begins to exist. We have power in our words because we are created in God's image. God created this world by his word. There is power in his word. So Isaiah 55 verses 10 to 11 says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Amen. God's words will not return to him empty. His words will accomplish the purpose which he sent it for it. Because his words are perfect, trustworthy, right, and righteous, what God says will come true. And the results are always perfect, right, and righteous. Although our words doesn't always uh, come true, people are aware of the power of words. That's why we have a saying like, words are stronger than swords. Now, my father was a minister. Uh, when I was about seven years old, we moved to a new church. On the first Sunday, uh, he presided over the service and preached. But as he began to preach, a man who was sitting in the middle began to do something. He took out his newspaper, uh, opened it wide, and began to read it. The next Sunday, he brought a calculator, and as my father began to preach, the man began to use his calculator throughout the sermon. Apparently, he had much to go through. So almost every Sunday, he would do something like that. And my parents didn't know the man. I mean, they didn't do anything wrong to him. The first Sunday was the first day they met him. But whenever he did such things, um, his wife would come to her parents and say she was really sorry. And, you know, the people in the southern province, they use strong expressions. She even said, my husband will 
be brought to his senses once his head is punctured. Guess what? It became true. One day he was caught in a fight and someone hit his head with an iron bar and his head was punctured. But thankfully he survived and he recovered and came to his senses, just as his wife said. Well, that's the power of words. Now, Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now, because we are not God's, what we say doesn't always come true. And because we are not perfect, right, or trustworthy, the fruit of our work is not always good. Part of the reason why the world is in the state that it is in now is that the words we speak are not so good. And most people seemed not to be aware of this. Verses 12 to 13 of Psalm 19 says, Who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. Now when accidents happen, some people ask why God didn't protect them. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God stopped the bullets from firing? Or blunted the edges of knives? Or softened the um, impact? Of falling or saved us from robbers. But here's a, here is a thing we should remember. If God wanted to prevent evil, he would have to muzzle our mouth first. Someone said, you need only one muscle to destroy the, the dignity of a person. It's the muscle hidden in your mouth. Now the Apostle James in James 3 verses 8 to 10 says this, No man can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men. We have been made in God's likeness. Who have been made, made in God's likeness? Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. So how does God deal with this? Now let's say this together. God has given us his words. God has given us his words. Yes, God has given us his words. The words he has given to us are described in eight different ways in today's passage. So the word of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul, trustworthy, making wise the simple, right, giving joy to the heart, radiant, giving light to the eyes, more precious than gold, sweeter than honey, sure, and altogether righteous. So his words revive the soul. His words give wisdom to the simple. His words give joy to the heart. His words give light to the eyes. So it's no wonder they are more precious than pure gold and sweeter than honey. His words are sure and altogether righteous. Besides, by his words, we are warned. We are given warnings. So in Luke 12, 3, it says, What you have said in the dark will be heard in the, in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. Matthew 12, 36. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. Lastly, there is a promise. In keeping them, which is God's word, there is great reward. So on top of all the benefits above, God promises great reward to those who keep his word. So what do we have to do? Let's say this together. Fill your hearts with God's, wor God's words. 
In today's passage, Psalm, verse 14 of um, Psalm 19 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Luke 6.45, The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow is of his heart, his mouth speaks. C.S. Lewis, one of the um, greatest intellectual giants of the 20th century, wrote an interesting book called The Screwtape Letters. It's supposed to be a collection of um, letters from a demon whose name is Screwtape, and he's like an uncle figure to another demon named Wormwood. He gives some very good advice on how to deceive people into destruction. So in one letter, Screwtape said, it's funny how mortals always picture us as putting things into their minds. In reality, our best work is done by keeping things out. So when our hearts are filled with God's words, there is no room for other things. There simply isn't enough room for other things, other thoughts to come in and take root. But if our hearts are not filled with his words, all sorts of things come in and claim authority. That seems to be the case for many people. And it's no wonder they are not happy. So dear brothers and sisters, fill your hearts with the words of God. And shall we say this together again? Invite the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit. So together with God's words, we need to be filled with the Spirit. Jesus died on the cross during the Passover. Now, Passover is a day when the people of Israel celebrate the salvation of their ancestors in Egypt through the blood of lambs. Just as the lambs were sacrificed to save the people, so Jesus was sacrificed to save us. Now, Pentecost comes 50 days after Passover, it's when the people harvested grain and celebrated. So spiritually speaking, Pentecost is a season when new believers are harvested. Ten days before Pentecost, the disciples gathered together in one place and prayed fervently. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came on them in a powerful way. They were all filled with the Spirit. Wonderful things happen when Spirit comes. And one of the first things to happen is change, change of people's words. So Acts 2, verse 3 to 4 says, They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The disciples began to speak in tongues. Since Pentecost was an important festival, Jews and the diaspora gathered in Jerusalem. The disciples began to speak in their, in their languages. So what did they say? People who heard them said, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. So the disciples began to speak about the wonders of God. But what exactly did they speak about? In Acts 1.8, it says, Jesus predicted, but you will be receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What do they become when the Spirit comes? My witnesses. That is, witnesses of Jesus. The witnesses of Jesus talk about Jesus. Among all the wonders of God, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest wonder of all. So when the Spirit comes, 
we begin to talk about things of Jesus, things about Jesus, and things that are fitting for the followers of Jesus. Now let's say this together: Let there be life. Let there be life. Did I hear light? <laughs> Let there be life. When the Spirit comes, our words change, and words of complaining, criticizing, and worrying are transformed into words of thanksgiving, blessing, and faith. More than anything else, we speak the truth in love. We talk about Jesus. The mouth is not for eating only; it's for speaking God's word. So when we speak His word, we participate in the work of creation. We open up ways where there are no way. We open doors that are locked. We create a breakthrough. When you speak the truth, darkness fades away. When you proclaim His promises, doubts and worry melt away. When you talk about Jesus. Despair is replaced by hope. So I bless you and pray that through what you say, many people will come to experience true freedom and joy in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Daniel twelve three says this: Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness. Like the stars, forever and ever, may all of us become such people. Fill your hearts with God's word and pray, so that the Holy Spirit may come and empower you. Then God will give you an infinite number of ideas and show you the way forward. Your words will change. Your life will change. He will work through you. To restore your families, businesses, and relationships, believe that God will do so. Believe that God can work through you. Pray specifically over problems and seek His wisdom for everything. He will open up ways. Revelation twelve ten to eleven says this. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ, for the accuser, which is Satan, accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. And listen to this: they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now the words we speak. The words that we declare are the key that breaks through spiritual strongholds, but it has to be based on God's word. No other word will do. It has to be God's word. People say we are living in in an era of crises. There are crises of climate and economy. Where still there is a also there is also a spiritual crisis. But when you think about it, there's never been a time without crisis. Every generation had its own problems, but for every generation, there were people who were full of God's word and His Spirit. They were the salt of the earth and light of the world. They enjoyed the abundant grace of God. They were victorious. Victorious by faith, they were the ones who made real differences in people's lives. They were the ones who God used to bring heaven to earth. And God is calling us to participate. God is calling you to participate. And for that end, as the psalmist says, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing. In the sight of our Lord, Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lead us.
to fill our hearts with your word. Enable us to speak your word into situations. We believe that you will work through us. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. and glory. You are worthy of all praise. As we enter this season of thanksgiving, we remember your grace in every detail of our lives. We offer these gifts as a token of gratitude for all the blessings you bestowed on us. May they be used for the extension of your kingdom and for your glory. We pray all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you everyone again for joining to worship together. It's always good to worship our Lord. Uh, we have uh, two newcomers today. Uh, would you like to stand where you are? We would like to welcome you. Um, yes. God bless you. So as I normally say, you have come to the right place. We'll start praying for you from today. So you will continue to be blessed. We also give thanks to our very own Tehila praise team and the Shoshana Choir. And also to the brother Wihun Lee who gave God special praise. I thought his instrument was really cool. It's like a manly instrument. Anyway, so we thank you everyone also for those who are serving at the front and also at the back. So we are so blessed to have you all. Shall we bless them with a round of applause? Um, also, in right now we there. Um, sorry, Pastor Joseph Kim is here <laughs> at the back. Uh, <laughs> He has come to say final goodbye. Uh, he's been around to help me and other pastors with the Global Christian Forum. And now he's going back and, you know, to, to um, Gordon Cornwall 
Theological Seminary, which is a wonderful seminary. And he is appointed as a partnership program director. And I'm sure God will use him mightily and gloriously for his kingdom. Amen. So pray for him and say heartfelt goodbyes as you leave this place. So now um, let us all stand together and greet one another by saying, Fill your hearts with God's word. 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 And also speak his words. Speak his words. Speak his words. Speak his words. And lastly, may God fill you with his spirit. May God fill you with his Holy Spirit. And our final song is How Great Is Our God. He truly is great. So let us sing together.
Now may the abundant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the unfathomable love of God our Father and the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit be with God's people in the awake ministries, their families, Myung Sung Church and their countries now and forever. Amen. Amen.